Mmm, you want some of this? Then stay tuned and I'll show you how I made it. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how I have prepared this beautiful jasmine rice that you guys saw previously. Now, we're going to jump right into it. Of course, you see that I have this pot. I have some oil, minced garlic, onion, thyme, basil, garlic salt, kidney beans in the can. And let's just jump right on into it. First, I'm going to pour three cups of rice. Now, when it comes to these cups of rice, you can make the amount that you need. In this case, I use three cups. So I'm going to make sure I have the proper water ratio for it. First, we do our even cups and it doesn't have to be so even, but just make sure that it is something you can go back to measuring when it comes to pairing the ratio of water to it. Here I am rinsing the rice clean. This is a little bit different from white rice. This is brown jasmine rice that I've received from Trader Joe, but you can find brown jasmine rice from anywhere. But brown jasmine rice or brown rice in particular does not have the starch like white rice have. That's why this is a little bit better than white rice. It is a grain and it is better for the kidneys and weight loss, things to that nature. Health wise is overall better. But I'm just gonna show you how to jazz it up and make it tasty versus just your plain traditional brown rice. We're just cleaning it off very well, draining and transporting it back into the pot. So here I'm going to place it on the stove and I'm going to grab the oil to keep it from sticking together. That's about one fourth of a cup of olive oil and I am blending it all in and my stove is on the low fire but I will increase it to like more of a low medium just to get the rice um, incorporated with the oil. And right here, I begin to incorporate all of my seasons. I put the seasons in before I add the water because I want to see how things are looking. I want to make sure that it's fully incorporated and just make sure that it, it, it's going to be jazzed up the way I want it to be jazzed up. You can do this with any kind of seasonings that you feel comfortable with or you're used to. Um, you know, I'm just used to not eating bland foods and plain foods. I'm a girl from the South. So I'm going to bring it if I can bring it. So right here, I added some thyme, some dry thyme. You can also add fresh thyme, fresh basil. It's all on you. I'm just cooking this over by a friend's house because they wanted to see how I did it. And I'm making this video especially for them and you too. So I'm blending all of those seasons up. I have the garlic, the thyme, the basil. And the stove is still on, so I am cooking this in. It will stick a little, so if it does stick, don't be afraid to turn the pot down because you don't want to burn your rice. Here I'm going to add some garlic salt. This comes from Trader Joe. I do not do the Lori's um, salt because they have some things in there that I'm not fond of as you can see right here it's just a simple ingredients you can pretty much read it and know what it is I don't like the caking agents that they put into um, lorries or all these different kind of things this is just a salt and twist a twist top you know where you can blend it as you go it 
if you want to taste this rice in particular, then I would suggest using the ingredients that I have. If you have a Trader Joe around you, they carry this all the time. If you don't have a Trader Joe, that's fine as well. So on to the beans. This can come from Trader Joe as well, but you can find kidney beans from anywhere. Just make sure they are not cooked or prepared. I'm draining all the water off because over time I've realized if you add these type of liquids into rice, white rice, brown rice, it doesn't matter, it's going to make your rice stick to the pot and we don't want that. We want to take that excess starch off. I have an extra pot just in case this stuff makes my rice a little sticky. I don't want to burn my rice so I'm always ready to transport the rice from one pot to another just so I can maintain my beautiful finished product. It happens you guys. It doesn't make you less of a cook because you burn your rice at the bottom. <laughs> it happens when it comes to flavoring certain rice. So here I am adding my uh, onion that was one onion and there we are with the ratio of the water now we did three cups of rice so here we're going to do six cups of water one can't fit so I'm going to just put it on the side and let it stand by until the water drains a little bit in this pot the water ratio is one to one I'm blending just doing a nice simple mix nothing messy because my pot is a little smaller I did put a lot but remember I have a pot that's on standby because it will fluff up so just blend that all together this is also a good time for you to crank it up Crank it to the highest temperature, the highest flame, because you need this to dehydrate. Now, this is where I want to taste and see what the flavor of the water is. I want to make sure that it's, it's perfect. I don't want it to be bland. So right here, as you can see, it's on and popping and I have that other cup of water that I did not pour in waiting for this to dehydrate I don't want to put cold water in there so I have it warming in the other pot very slowly being careful not to dehydrate the amount of water that needs to go in so now we have the dehydrated rice and we're going to add that other cup that I put on the stove to um, get ready to be poured in. I have added a little pink salt in here because my rice wasn't flavored enough and sometimes when you deal with pink salt, it doesn't break down the way it should and you can kind of have some crumbles, uh, little rocks, you know, but it's a good salt to cook with. So I added it into that um, pot so it can melt a little bit and as you can see I poured it in in the other pot where I will transfer I'm adding some oil so I can stop it from sticking I'm all about presentation you guys so um, if you haven't noticed from any of my dishes um, you can see a lot of my dishes on Instagram I made a funky mess on the stove with this water flooding over so that's just not that's not how the stove actually looked but um, I um, yeah so I added um, the oil and from here I am fluffing it in now my stove is still at a lowest temperature when that water dehydrates you want to make sure that your fire is at the lowest temperature and covered with a pot top and make sure you don't have much um, 
ventilation. You want just a small area of ventilation. So check all the areas because when it comes to brown rice, it takes a longer time to cook. So you want to make sure that the water is not dehydrating and you want it to you want it to take its precious time as long as uh, it's cooking. Let it take its time. Let it take its time. So just adjust the pot. If you don't have a regular rice cook pot, uh, a rice cooker top, then that's okay. Just do it this way. So it's been cooking about maybe 30 minutes. And so here you want to get a rice fork and start fluffing it from side to side. And try not to stir it fluff it from side to side because you can break your rice down and once again presentation is everything here you're going to cover it up again and make sure you have the proper ventilation and then 15 minutes later and maybe 20 minutes later voila Here's your beautiful brown rice. So I hope this video was easy, simple to you guys. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have tried this recipe. Other than that, be sure to check me out on my other areas, Instagram, that's holistic underscore meaningful. And you can also find me on Facebook at going holistic. And I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. I'll see you guys next time and ciao.